Mom, I just spent hours cooking your favorite dishes, mashed potatoes and grilled ribs with your special recipe. I'm hoping to bring them to you and see a smile on your face. Why are you so incredibly stubborn? Do you honestly believe that a few measly dishes can change everything? Don't be so naive. I'll just throw them in the trash like I've thrown away your efforts before. But this is what you always said you wanted to eat during your hospital days. I woke up early this morning just to prepare these dishes for you, Mom. I did it because I want to make you happy, even if it's just for a moment. If you truly cared about my happiness, you would do as I say. Divorce my son immediately. I can't believe this, Mom. What happened to you? Everything was perfectly fine just a week ago. Do you remember when you were in the hospital? You told me how lucky you felt to have me as your daughter-in-law. I said that because I needed someone to take care of me without bothering my son. You know it well I had a stroke, and you spent a whole month tending to me in that hospital. With only one son, I couldn't burden him and certainly couldn't afford to hire help. So I pretended to like you just to exploit your care until I recovered. But now that I'm healthy again, I have no use for you. Divorce my son and take your daughter away from my family. I'll give you $200,000 to find a new place to live. No, Mom. Is there something you're hiding from me? Is that why you're behaving like this? This isn't the mother-in-law I've known and loved. Remember all those times you showered me with affection and care? You bought me delicious food and beautiful clothes. And on the day Lily was born, it was you who supported and looked after us, allowing me to rest. I refuse to believe that you hate me. I've made myself clear, yet you still don't understand? I only pretended to love and appreciate you because I needed someone to take care of me until I got better. You were a convenient means to an end, a way to ensure my well-being without inconveniencing my son. But now I don't need you anymore. You're nothing but a burden, and your presence angers and disgusts me. How can you say such cruel things, Mom? If there's something about me that you dislike, just tell me. I'm willing to change. Can you see how much I love you and consider you my real mother? Ever since I was abandoned by my own mother and left at that orphanage at the tender age of three, I've never known the love of a true family. It wasn't until I met Paul and became part of your family that I finally experienced what it means to be loved by a mother. I won't divorce Paul over some absurd reason like you not liking me. I won't let go of the only family I have. Do you honestly believe that I treated you well because I actually liked you? It was only because you were pregnant with my grandson that I pretended to be nice to you. I thought having a grandson would change things, but truthfully I never liked you at all. And let's face it, your background is utterly disdainful. I seriously suspect you manipulated my son into marrying you just to get into this house. No, Mom. That's not true. I truly love Paul. From the moment I found out I was pregnant, I never forced Paul to marry me. I made it clear that I could raise and take care of the baby on my own. It was actually you who said you wanted me to be your daughter-in-law. Why are you suddenly changing your tune and treating me so differently? You're testing my patience. You need to divorce Paul immediately for my sake. This home is no longer a place for you and your daughter. You're just a useless, weak daughter-in-law. But this is all so sudden for me. Have you forgotten how much I love you? Do you remember three months ago when you had a stroke and had to be hospitalized for over a month? It was me who resigned from my job to be by your side day and night. I changed diapers, fed you porridge, and even accompanied you to physical therapy. Wasn't our love still strong then? Are you saying that you treated me well because you wanted someone to take care of you for free? Then why did you push my hand away when I tried to change your diaper? Why did you insist on doing it yourself? Can you see how absurd this all is? Oh, now you're sitting here trying to take credit for everything? Do you want more money to divorce my son? Fine. I'll give you $200,000 and the house I'm living in. That's all I managed to save my entire life. Of course, I'll still ask Paul to provide monthly child support. So please understand that it's time for you to leave my house. No, Mom. I never wanted your money. I just hope you won't force me to divorce Paul. I don't want to lose a mother again. I've already experienced abandonment once and I don't want to go through it again. Mom, maybe it's the side effects of your medication that are making you irritable. But you don't really mean to chase me away, do you? Enough with your manipulative words, Wendy. I've had it with your presence in this house. I never loved you, and I never will. You're nothing more than a burden, a stain on our family. Mom, I can't believe you're still insisting on this. Divorcing Paul is not the solution. We can work through whatever issues you have, but tearing family apart is not the answer. I don't want to hear your excuses or pleas, Wendy. I've made up my mind. Divorce my son and leave our lives for good. You're not welcome here anymore. But what about the love we shared? 
The moments we cherish together. Is all of that meaningless to you now? I've always considered you my family, my mother. How can you turn your back on me like this? You were never truly part of this family, Wendy. I tolerated you out of necessity, but I never loved you. It's time for you to face the truth. Divorce my son and leave before I take further action. This is so hard for me to comprehend, Mom. I thought we had a connection, a bond that went beyond blood. I've given my heart and soul to this family, to you and Paul. How can you discard that so easily? Mom, I'm going to pretend that today's conversation didn't happen and assume you're under the influence of drugs or something to behave this way. I cannot and will not comply with your unreasonable request. Your sentimental words mean nothing to me, Wendy. Just do as I say and leave. This is the end of our relationship. Mommy, Sandra, your neighbor just texted me and said you fell down the stairs yesterday. Mom, why didn't you text me when you fell? Are you in the hospital or at home so I can take care of you right now? What? Why is Sandra contacting you? Since the day you got sick, I've been worried. But since you don't want to live with us, I have no choice but to ask Sandra to keep an eye on you. And if you have any problems, tell me immediately. Fortunately, Sandra agreed to help. So that's why Sandra has been frequenting my house lately? Is she spying on me for you? How dare you invade my privacy like this? Mom, it's not about spying on you. It's about my genuine concern for your well-being. But since you shut me out and locked the door, I had no other option. Please, Mom, tell me how you're doing. Where are you? Let me take care of you. I don't need you to come here. I have my new daughter-in-law to take care of me now. Oh, she's so much better than you. It's a shame she wasn't my daughter-in-law from the start. Mom? New daughter-in-law? What are you talking about? Oh, didn't I mention it? Paul has agreed to divorce you. He's found someone else, and I fully support him. This girl is carrying my grandson, and I prefer her over you. Isn't that reason enough for you to believe me? What? So you're telling me Paul is having an affair, and not only are you aware of it, but you also condone his actions? How could this happen? Why not? My son did nothing wrong. He was just seeking his own happiness. I've been telling you all along. You should have divorced Paul before discovering this painful truth. So that's why Paul has been distant and sleeping on the sofa at night? I thought it was just work stress. I had no idea he was betraying our marriage. Stop avoiding the truth. Accept the divorce, take the money, and stay away from my family. I'm about to become a grandmother, and I won't let you ruin this for me. I'll make sure the new daughter-in-law receives the respect she deserves. No, Mom. I won't accept this without hearing it directly from Paul's own mouth. Even if he has betrayed me, I am still your daughter-in-law for now. I have a duty to care for you. So please, tell me which hospital you're in. What is wrong with you? Why are you so stubborn, clinging to me when I clearly want nothing to do with you? You don't owe me anything. Despite your pitiful past, must you cling to me like a burden? Do you have some kind of mental illness? Actually, I do owe you my life. Do you remember 15 years ago when you risked everything to save a little girl in a pink dress clutching a bunny bear? In the process of saving that girl, you got hit by a car and injured your left shoulder. How do you know that? Did I ever tell you this story? Or did Paul mention it? I never disclose the details to anyone. Because I am that girl. The day you saved me, I was with a family who was considering adopting me and a supervisor. But as we crossed the street to enter a cafe, they left me behind abandoning me without a second thought. Being young and oblivious, I chased after them, unaware that the traffic light was about to change. Just as I was about to step onto the road, you pushed me out of harm's way. When I turned around, I saw you lying on the ground, injured by the car. You saved me from a devastating car accident, and I will never forget the love and sacrifice you showed me. What? Is this true? How is it even possible? If you already knew the truth, why didn't you tell me for the past four years? Actually, I only discovered this a few months ago when I was giving you a bath at the hospital. I noticed the scar in your left arm from the accident, and I found the same clothes as the woman in the accident among your old belongings when I was cleaning your house. Out of curiosity, I asked Paul, and he confirmed the story with the same time and place. The world must be playing some cruel game. But wait, you mentioned a family interested in adopting you that day. So why did you end up in an orphanage, enduring years of loneliness? After the incident, they believed I was an omen of bad luck, a bringer of misfortune. They refused to adopt me, and the rumor spread. From then on, no family wanted to adopt me. It's difficult to comprehend. How can people harbor such irrational thoughts? 
Nevertheless, I'm grateful that the little girl I saved grew up to be kind and respectful. Mom, do you realize that you've been acting strange lately? Just a while ago, you were cursing and insulting me, and suddenly you turned into the gentle, loving mother you used to be. I... I am simply relieved that I didn't save the wrong person. But don't mistake my relief for affection. My stance remains unwavering. You must divorce my son immediately. Fine, I will take your demand into consideration. But until then, I will continue taking care of you as your daughter-in-law. I am indebted to you for saving my life and I won't abandon you when you need support. There are no feelings of love involved. Just gratitude. Is that clear? I don't require your gratitude or anything else. Just stay away from me. If you expect me to divorce Paul, then you must allow me to care for you during this time. I won't be ungrateful and forsake my savior in her time of need. Ugh, you are incredibly stubborn. Fine, I will share my location with you. But once I've recovered, you will divorce Paul and I never want to see you again. Mom, why didn't you inform me about your illness? Is that why you were trying to separate us? What are you talking about? Illness? What's wrong with you? I'm perfectly healthy. Stop hiding it from me. I already know the truth. You didn't have to act like nothing was happening. No, what? Are you referring to the incident where I fell down the stairs? It's been a while and I'm fine. Besides, it wasn't a serious injury, so there's no need for concern, right? No, mom. I'm talking about your high risk of hemiplegia and early signs of Alzheimer's. What's all this about? What are you trying to say? Today, when I went to the hospital to retrieve an item I had left behind during my previous visit, I bumped into the doctor who treated you when you had a stroke. He gave me a notebook you had forgotten. Accidentally, I dropped it and read its contents. It's a notebook where you record all your important information, characteristics, and relationships, including mine, Paul's, and my daughter's. It seems strange to me, so I asked the doctor about it. He informed me that you were showing early signs of Alzheimer's, and the notebook is meant to help you remember your loved ones. I don't understand what you're talking about. Just because I keep a notebook to jot down some information doesn't mean I have Alzheimer's? Don't believe him, he's talking nonsense. Mom, I have seen your medical records. It also mentions the high possibility of you experiencing hemiplegia. The doctor informed you about this a few weeks ago. Is this the reason you pushed me away? Why would I hide such information from you? I made it clear that I wanted you out of the house so I could marry my new daughter-in-law. Why are you still deceiving yourself? I'm perfectly healthy. I don't have any diseases. Are you making up stories? You keep mentioning your new daughter-in-law, but I never saw any woman during the time I was taking care of you. Did you mention she intentionally pushed me into desperation and forced me to divorce Paul? And is she truly pregnant with Paul's daughter? Yes, it's true that she's pregnant with Paul's daughter, which is why she couldn't come and take care of me as often. I knew it all along. So you've been intentionally lying to me? Mom, just admit it. Admit that you fabricated everything to push me away for some reason. What nonsense are you talking about? Did I say something wrong? Last time you told me that Paul's mistress was pregnant with a boy. But just now when I asked if it was a girl, you admitted it. If it's true that you sent me away because I couldn't have a boy, how could you forget the sex of the baby? I... I just made a mistake while typing. There's nothing wrong. Yes, I pushed you away because you couldn't give me a grandson. I wanted you to divorce Paul. Mom, you never kicked me out because I couldn't have a son. And now I'm certain that what the doctor told me is true. You, you set a trap for me? How dare you do that? Mom, enough with the lies and deceit. I won't let you manipulate me anymore. I demand to know the truth. Why are you really pushing me away? What is the real reason behind all of this? I, I can't. No more evasions, Mom. I deserve to know. We've been through so much together, and I've been by your side when you needed me. I won't let you shut me out like this. Tell me what's really going on. <sighs> Fine, Wendy. You want the truth? The truth is, I'm scared. I'm scared of losing my independence, my control over my own life. I see my health declining, and it terrifies me. I pushed you away because I thought it would be easier to face it alone. Mom, did you know that you were really sick and hid it from me? How could a mother be like this? Taking care of a mother is the responsibility of the child. If you have any fate, I will live my life in regret. No, I don't think that way. I just believe that you are a good girl and you deserve a mother-in-law who loves you more than having to work hard to take care of a mother who can't take care of herself. I didn't want to be a burden to you. What about Paul's affair and you having a new daughter-in-law? I need to come clean about something else, Wendy. 
The story about Paul's affair and the new daughter-in-law was also a fabrication. When Paul and I went to the doctor that day, we received some devastating news. It turns out that Paul has a high risk of developing heart disease. We were devastated and didn't want to see you suffer or carry the burden of taking care of both of us. Paul has heart disease? Why didn't you tell me? We don't want you to know about this. So in a misguided attempt to protect you, we made up that story to make you feel hurt and push you away. We thought that if you believed we didn't want you around, you would find happiness elsewhere. But deep down, we knew you were so compassionate and dedicated that you wouldn't easily give up on us. That's why we resorted to those desperate measures. It was a flawed decision made out of fear and a misguided sense of protection. Mom, I can't believe you would go to such lengths to shield me from pain. I understand that your intentions came from a place of love, but fabricating those stories only caused more damage. We should have faced these challenges together as a family. Wendy, I appreciate your kindness and willingness to forgive, but I still believe it's in your best interest to find a new mother-in-law who can provide the care and support you deserve. I don't want to be a burden to you or hold you back from finding happiness elsewhere. Mom, I understand your concern, but I want you to know that I am committed to being here for you and Paul. I married into this family because I love Paul and I care deeply for both of you. I don't see you as a burden. I see you as family. And family takes care of each other no matter the challenges we face. Wendy, you're truly selfless and compassionate and I'm grateful for that. But I want you to consider your own happiness as well. It's not fair for you to give up your dreams and aspirations for us. You deserve to have a mother-in-law who can be there for you without any limitations. Mom, my happiness lies in being here for you and Paul in building a strong family bond and in supporting each other. Life is not always easy and challenges will come our way, but together we can face them. I won't give up on you or our family. We still have a chance to make things right and create a loving and fulfilling future together. Wendy, I may have underestimated your dedication and the depth of your love. I'm grateful to have you as my daughter-in-law and I will cherish our relationship. Let's embrace the future with hope and resilience, knowing that we are stronger together. Thank you, Mom. I believe that by facing these challenges head-on, we can strengthen our bond and find happiness within our family. I won't let you face this alone, and I promise to do my best to care for you and Paul. In a twist of fate, Pamela's timely medical treatment prevented her from experiencing hemiplegia. However, her battle with Alzheimer's disease persisted, causing her moments of forgetfulness and confusion. I with my unwavering love and support, stood by Pamela's side, offering her strength and care during the challenging times. Pamela may have forgotten moments and faces, but she never forgot the warmth and care that surrounded her. Paul, on the other hand, faced a health crisis of his own and was hospitalized for a period of time. It was a difficult and trying period for the family, but I remained a pillar of strength, providing Paul with the support and encouragement he needed to overcome his illness. Through the ups and downs, my devotion to my family never wavered. I tirelessly cared for Pamela, ensuring her safety and comfort, even as her memory faded. My unwavering love and patience became the anchor that held my family together during our toughest moments. As time passed, Pamela's condition continued to deteriorate and her moments of clarity became fewer. However, the love between Pamela, Paul, and I grew stronger. We cherished the moments of lucidity, cherishing the memories we could still create together.